Come with me as we take the ordinary and make it extraordinary. The first step to every furniture project makeover is to make sure you clean with a degreasing cleaner. I use Crud Cutter Kitchen Degreaser, but you can use any sort of degreasing product. Also, I like to take my hardware off because I like it being the um, either the natural metal or I like to change the metal color. Um, then it, you need to make sure that you wipe off where the hardware was so that there's no buildup. Then, because I am not sanding, I am using Dixie Bell Slick Stick, which will ensure on smooth surfaces that the Dixie Bell adheres to the surface. This product does not prevent bleed through. Um, it's not a stain blocker, so you could also use a stain blocking primer that also has a bonding agent in it, and that would be fine. These two end tables used to be a vanity, which is why they have different colored legs. I had to make a few new legs and there's a lot of repair work, but it is a great way to use an old broken vanity. For the most part, I just use long fluid st strokes um, when I am painting. That way there's no clumps or drips or anything and you get a nice smooth surface. You do not have to worry whether it's perfectly covered because this is just make the paint stick. When I start working on the details you'll notice that I do a circular motion and then I kind of tap the brush into them. That is just to make sure the bristles get into all of those little nooks and crannies and makes everything um, where I don't have to worry about any paint peeling up or anything in the future. This next step I am using shellac which will prevent any bleed through to go through because you can see there is some bleed through but then after the shellac dries we can move on to our next step which is applying the Dixie Belle Limeade and this is a mineral based paint so it's really durable, it goes on really easily and I only use two coats on these two pieces. And again, in this first coat, I'm not really worrying about getting 100% full coverage. There will be, you know, thinner spots and thicker spots, and that's okay. I am using my fine mister that I got at Hobby Lobby, or you can get it at any hairdressing outlet. I'm using that to just mist and moisten my paintbrush just so the paint slides easier. You don't want to get it too wet because then that will thin the paint down and you have to do more coats. Since I'm working outside, I often have to pick out little fibers and hairs and bugs and that sort of thing because you want a nice smooth finish. And I'm just using the same tapping and swirling motions in all the details that I did with the slick stick. Here I am working on my second coat of paint. Um, again, I am picking out any imperfections just to make sure I have as smooth of coats as possible. And like I said, I only needed two coats. This paint's pretty good about coverage. Again, I am just doing long fluid strokes and sometimes I will do, if I find that my first coat is a little bit streaky, I will go the opposite direction on the second coat just to kind of cover up some of those brush marks but this paint is really good about brush marks and I like the paint brush that I'm using as well. It doesn't produce very many brush strokes. I'm just getting really, making sure I'm getting really deep into all the crevices 
just so that everything is covered and there's no white or natural brown spots. Here I am applying one thin coat of polyacrylic. The paint I'm using is a mineral based paint, it is very porous so the acrylic paint that I'll be antiquing with will soak into it and change the color permanently and it'll be harder to take out so I am doing a top coat that way it's kind of a barrier so it'll preserve a little of the original color when I am antiquing it and it'll make it easier for me to wipe excess off. I also opted to paint the back, normally I don't, but since this one had so many different wood colors and different pieces added in, I thought it would just make it look better to paint the back. And I do like to keep the labels and any hand printed words or anything from the original manufacturers visible just so that the new owners can go back and research their pieces and find out a little history about it. I think for each coat, I usually wait about at least a couple hours in between to really make sure they're dried and cured. Once the polyacrylic was dry and cured, I went ahead with just a regular craft paint black acrylic. I just get the cheap stuff from Walmart. I think that bottle was like maybe five bucks. And then you get a ton of it on your brush and you just really smush it into those grooves and you'll see me spraying it again just trying to get that paint to move more freely and you want to work in small sections because you do not want the paint to dry because once it's dry it's a lot harder to get off and I also kind of mist over the top of it just to keep it moist until I am ready to wipe it down and I just wipe it down with one of my husband's old t-shirts. I don't have any special things for that. Um, you could use anything that doesn't have lint. And then I just go through and I just wipe it down. And I just keep wiping and wetting the finish until I have the right amount taken off. Sometimes until you get used to it, you might take too much off. It's okay, just add a little more black to it and just retry it. And I'm also making sure I'm not getting into those grooves because that's really where you want the black to stay. You want it to really have all those carvings and details stand out. The top portion of details, I'm not really worrying too much about how much I'm taking off because I will be putting silver over those.
your hands do get really messy doing this, so the paint I use is really easy to come off, but if you're using a paint that's a little harder to come off, then you should probably wear gloves for it. I always forget. There are a lot of ways that you can get this look without doing this technique. I know some people use a black wax, some people use stain. I just prefer this mesh method because it's a lot more forgiving um, since I'm using water-based paint. If it's really bad, you can just take it off with um, water, soap, and start over if you need to. Whereas some of the other ones, once it's on, it's just kind of on. But you get the same effect. For here, the reason I'm only going into the creases and not doing the entire part of the side is because that's where you would find the most grime and age, is right in the corners where people wouldn't be cleaning it as much. And then I feather it or fade it into the center where it would always be a little lighter because that's where people would be constantly rubbing and cleaning. And I make it more of a random, random motions. I don't just go up and down. I will swirl, I will pull it side to side. That way it's not streaky. And I will go over it multiple times and re-wet it multiple times just to really make sure you don't have harsh, straight, up and down lines, but it's more of a blend in from the front or the sides to the center. And I'm constantly trying to find a clean spot on my rag because eventually the black paint will soak into the rag and you'll just kind of be smearing around more black paint. I do end up getting a new rag once. It just gets way too hard to take back that black. And this is basically how I do all of the flat surfaces when I am doing this technique on any piece of furniture.
and often I will step back, relook over everything and just make sure nothing sticks out as too dark or too light and I will go back in and kind of fix those areas. Well, second to last step, which is I am going to put two coats of polyacrylic over the top of it. Polyacrylic is the same top coat we used as a barrier between the chalk paint and the acrylic paint. And we are going to do two thin layers. I like polyacrylic because it is a very strong finish. It is durable and it's water-based so it will not yellow your paint like polyurethane will. I have also used water-based polyurethane and I personally have never had a problem with it, but I know other people in the business have. So polyacrylic is one of those where if you don't want to do wax, it's one of the best finishes out there. You just want to make sure that you're distributing it evenly and that you don't have any drips or globs and that you're not missing anything. I like to use a gloss polyurethane mainly because I like glossy furniture but also it really does help when you're going in to do the second coat to make sure that it's fully covered because you will see the difference between the gloss and the matte paint whereas some of the matte finishes it's a little harder to see when you've actually missed a spot. And I'm doing this step second to the last because the last product we'll be using is a wax based product and the polyacrylic will not work over it so that product you always need to use last. And here I am just burnishing with a brown paper bag to kind of knock down some of the high points, some of the lint that might have gotten stuck in the polyacrylic. And I do this in between each and every coat of top coat that I do. You can use 220 grit sandpaper as well. I just do my coats really thin and I worry that using the sandpaper I will actually start eating through the top coat and then in certain areas you only have one one coat of the top coat and I worry that that's just not durable enough so this is just me being paranoid so I like to use the paper bags plus I have like a million paper bags it also makes it nice and shiny when you do it over your main coat it'll shine it up a little bit and make it a little more polished and here I'm just doing my second coat Here is the final product we are using. It's a wax based um, gold foil type thing. I guess I don't really know what rub and buff is, but it makes an absolutely beautiful metallic finish. I started using a rag, but it was really hard to control. So I ended up halfway through getting Q-tips and it was so much easier to control. But the nice thing about Rub and Buff is if you do get it on an area you don't want it, and even if it dries, you can easily take it off with mineral spirits. So you'll see me getting it a little messy as I am working in this detail. And I didn't worry about it because I just got, I went down to my studio and got a little of my artist grade mineral spirits and it just took it right off. And with this product, what you do is you put it on and then you wait, I think it's 15 minutes. I'd have to check on that, but um, I'm pretty sure it's 15 minutes till it's completely set up and then you kind of rub off the extra and by rubbing it, you also burnish it with a cloth and it makes it really metallic and shiny. And it's just a really pretty finish to put on a piece, especially if you have these beautiful details that you want multiple colors and textures on. I also used it to change the color of the hardware. I liked the dark of the hardware, but I also wanted to shine up some of the details because they were very detailed. 
and so I just took that q-tip and just lightly rubbed it over the hardware just to get the raises and you'll see in the end that it just looks absolutely amazing with the piece. Unfortunately, that footage, it was a really windy day and I realized why you don't have autofocus on your camera when you do videos because it was just focusing in and out so most of the footage was really blurry. So I couldn't put the footage on. But you just kind of use the same technique that you would on furniture on the um, hardware. And here I'm just going back and just filling in some areas that I had rubbed away because I did not wait the correct amount of time. But I actually didn't really mind having some of that green show through because it did truly make it look aged, like it wasn't perfectly put on that day. And here I'm just going around the details just to bring a little more bling into it. And I do go in later on and actually fill in all, all sides of the trim sticking up instead of just the top. I just felt the top wasn't quite doing it for me. Yep, and there I'm just going in and scrubbing off some of the area that I had been a little messy with, with the mineral spirit. Thank you for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please hit the like button and subscribe to click the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss out on our video. Bye! Bye.